Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to share with you what I learned after listening to a two hour episode of Dr. Andrew Humerman from Stanford School of Medicine. In this episode, he spoke about his fitness toolkit and something really caught my eye because he mentions all of these things which are simple yet so powerful. So I decided to make this video for you guys so you don't have to listen to those two hours. Now, one of the things he mentioned is that by doing something as simple as calf raises during the day that you're sitting down, you can actually have have a 60% decrease in insulin and a 52% decrease in your blood glucose levels, which means that if you're working, just do some calf raves for two to three hours under your table, no one will come to know, and that will actually offset a lot of this blood sugar. Now, why is it important? Because controlling our blood sugar is one of the most important parts on longevity. And this is something that I teach in multiple of my courses in my life. And Dr. Huberman talks about the same thing too. Now in the podcast, Huberman talks about this foundation protocol and honestly it's really interesting because it caters to so many different aspects of fitness and I was really lucky because I understood this very earlier in my life normally people go to the gym to build muscle or they're running outside to build endurance but in life you need some sort of a balance so this is what this video is all about and I'll tell you exactly what Dr. Huberman does so you can put this into your life now he starts his day on a Sunday I usually do it on a Monday, but you can do it anytime. Let's call it day one. Now, imagine it's day one of your new fitness routine. Your goal here is to build a little bit of endurance without like killing yourself. So how long should you be doing it? 30 minutes. What Dr. Huberman does is that he goes for something called as zone two cardio where he goes for a hiking experience. Now you must be wondering what is zone two cardio and how do I get to it? How do I know I'm in it? Now zone two cardio is a sweet spot where you're working out, but at a moderate intensity. What is moderate? Here's where it gets very interesting. If you look at your heart rate, you can use like a fitness tracker or a variable or go to like, if you have the patience, just take your pulse, but now we have so much of technology. You should be pushing yourself where you're breathing a little bit more harder than normal, but it's still able, you're still able to have a conversation with someone, like going for a hike and having a conversation with someone, going for a speed walk and having a conversation with anyone. But if you're running, you're not able to talk to someone. So that is around the zone too. And Dr. Huberman does is that he climbs a hill and sometimes he'll say that it's very difficult for him to have a conversation and that's when he gets out of zone two. You should give this a try as well. Try going for a walk in the park. You can do a bike ride. You can do something that makes you enjoy the moment and then ask yourself, can I still talk comfortably? If the answer is yes, then you're in zone two cardio. You can um, do some jogging, cycling, rowing, swimming. I personally like to do this either on a Saturday or a Sunday in Dubai when I like to go out with my girlfriend and my dog and we love hiking and we are so lucky that we're able to do something like a zone two cardio in a very enjoyable state. And one idea to make it challenging is to have a weighted rest so you will feel the weight for sure. Now there are doctors like Dr. Peter Atia that say that about 180 minutes to 200 minutes of zone 2 cardio in the week can have a lot of health benefits but for me it's any movement. You do any movement will be better than doing no movement so don't obsess a number. That's day one go for a hike or go for a long walk. Let's go to day two. For Dr. Huberman, it's when he trains his legs, when he trains his quadriceps, his hamstrings, his calves. And at first, I wondered why would he train leg that day? But he explains it that it's in the beginning of the month. If you train a large muscle group, you trigger certain metabolism changes, which can be carried over through the week. And I think it's like a cool advantage because this can enhance your hormones. It can enhance testosterone. It can boost growth hormones. And you start it right in the beginning of the day. How does he do it? 10 minutes of warm up, followed by 10 to 50, sorry, 50 to 60 minutes of hard training and dr huberman in the podcast brings a concept that i wasn't very familiar with which was he learned it when he was training with some high level coach and it's about this concept of putting your muscle into a weighted stretch position i first did not understand it but what this means and what it does for you is that imagine you're exercising and not just to lift weights or to run but to really improve how flexible you are and how flexible your muscles are you can put them into this weighted stretch position 
position, which means you're stretching your muscles while you're applying some weight to it. Now, he explains it that it kills two birds with one stone. A, you're stretching and B, you're making those same muscles much more stronger. Now, I know it sounds complex, so let's look at some exercises. First thing, calf raises. When you lift your heels off the ground, you're not just moving your calf muscles, but you're also adding a little bit of weight. Even like a dumbbell or a weight that you put while you're stretching can help those calves. The other example is leg curls for hamstrings. Imagine you're lying down and putting weights on your legs and then moving those weights in a stretch position. Your hamstrings get stretched. At the same time, they're getting stronger. Leg extension for quads is also a good example where you're sitting and you're raising your legs, extending them in the air. And that, that stretch against resistance works really well. So why is this important? Again, by stretching your muscles while you're adding some weight, you're actually making them much more stronger and much more flexible. And this, Dr. Huberman explains, that is very good when you want to stimulate muscle growth, increase your strength, and really avoid injuries. He mentions that he does three exercises max per muscle group with the standard rules of heavy weight, which means keep your lower reps. And if you want to increase the volume, then you know your reps have to be lower. And then if you're doing something else, you just switch it. He mentions that for a month he would go heavy train in the four to eight rep range and the next month he would go a little bit lighter and be in the 15 rep range and that apparently works great for him and I think it should work for everyone because it gives your muscle fibers enough chance to recover and it gives a different signal in the body now let's move on to day three this is where he has an active rest day where he does like a hot cold contrast session which means going into a sauna and then going into the cold this is typically what you would do in a recovery day Anyway, you could do this by doing hot, cold uh, showers, uh, jumping into the ice bath. I like to jump into the biohacking full spectrum infrared sauna and then our Siberian cold plunge. And if you want to know what those are, go to biohacking.com and you'll see that. But again, if you're interested in longevity, brain health, muscle, then all of these things can be increased by switching between hot and cold. So that's the recovery day. Day four is when Dr. Huberman calls it train your torso. He puts torso, but what he really means is like training your upper body uh, chest back shoulders think of it like a push pull day using bench press bent over rows pull-ups and you've got to follow his previous recommendations which is maximum of three exercises per muscle group and he really mentions that some of these exercises or most of these exercises are for his torso but i think it's for the entire body let's move on to day five this is a cardio day he says that he does 35 minutes of rowing but you can also do cycling rowing um, some sort of other cardio that you like he likes to push his body to 85 percent and um not to 100%, just to 85%. Because when you push your body to 85%, you can have a beneficial impact on your heart, your capillaries, on arteries, uh, all of these metabolically active systems. When you push to 100, you kind of like burn out. And that has its own space in the high intensity interval training. I would say running for most people is accessible, but you have other options as well. If you don't like running, you can do jumping jacks, you can do skipping ropes, get creative, um, walk on stairs, do some mountain climbers, anything. Then we move on to day six. Day six for him is that high intensity interval training. He also says that he involves some legs in it. So what he does is now he explains this concept of muscle protein synthesis, which means that every time you activate a muscle, you need to give it 42 to 72 hours for it to grow. And then he starts with leg day on day two and then brings some more legs into this whole cardio session. So he says that he stimulates it even more, which is okay, but I don't think a lot of legs have been stimulated at this point. He uses the assault bike to do like a 20 to 30 second all out sprint rest for 10 seconds and then go again going to like maximum heart rate i usually do this every morning when i do jiu-jitsu and uh, you know you push yourself to a maximum heart rate and for the days that i don't do jiu-jitsu i use the same approach with a assault bike but i don't go up to 12 rounds i normally go up to six rounds and i give myself bigger break but when we talk about 100 percent it's really there's a number so you take 220 minus your age and that's your maximum heart rate so you have to train up to 100 percent that means you need to go to that number day seven he says that he trains some biceps some triceps some calves and some neck he, he has got a big neck um, and there you have it. That's the simple protocol on Andrew Huberman's Foundation Fitness. And I hope I made it easier for you. It's pretty simple and um, you've got to learn a lot of things, but I will also put a PDF where somewhere around this video so you can get access to it. And now some things to remember is that when you're performing your workouts all the time, your muscles actually break down, okay? So you need to take some time to recover. Don't always push your body so much. When you are doing all of these hard exercises, take some time to breathe. Breathe deep 
don't breathe shallow. Next thing is sleep. If you haven't got good sleep, go to my sleep course, check the few videos out, but don't push yourself, go for a walk, go for like 20 or 15 minutes walk. It's much better than lifting weights or pushing yourself. And then here's something that I love doing is I love doing yoga and stretching. And it's really cool because a lot of fitness experts don't talk about this, but your muscles and your nerves, they work in a synergistic manner. And when you're constantly like going hard, 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 you don't give your system a chance to relax. One of the ways to do it is being more flexible, which means relaxing more and you can do it via stretching. Now, there's also another concept. It's it's about like relaxing in the moment while you're doing the exercise. Now, when you're doing the exercise, you are becoming more stronger and you know, you want to have that sympathetic nervous system dominance, but too much of that will make sure that you get burned out really fast. So make sure that even if you're working hard, relax a little bit, move your body around, do a little bit of stretching, and that will also increase more blood flow into the muscle fibers, which will make you stronger in the end. It's not only about pushing hard and about lifting weights. It's about empowering yourself to live a longer life a healthier life because that will actually help you out quite a lot and there's a test for this if you want to like <laughs> here's a fun test dr peter atia comes out of his um, school of thought it's called dead hanks grab a bowl or a pull up bar and just see how fast or how fast you fall off it when you're hanging the the test is how much can you hold on and this test will really determine how long you can live because people who can live for a very long time will have tighter grip strengths and they can hold on for a long period of time. And when we look at neuroscience, it also tells us that um, our bodies are constantly, it's all interconnected. I have a bigger concept that the universe is completely interconnected, but we'll be talking about our body. Our bodies are completely interconnected. So the way you breathe, the way you rest, the way you move, the way you stretch, the way you are, it'll all help you build muscle. This is something that is not really talked about in like the fitness world, but I'll tell you what I do. I do 20 minutes of yoga sessions five times a week. Um, I follow this YouTube channel called Yoga with Cassandra. She is amazing. Shout out to Cassandra out there. Feel free to try that. And we've spoken about some of the foundational habits. I will give you a PDF for this. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.